In FeatureCam 2016, the toolpath for ID OD side grooves has been upgraded with a number of improvements and supported functions. These include rough step over type support, wind fan and start points for finishing, better gouge checking and plunge and retract handling, and tool radius and part line cutter compensation support. This option is now set on by default in the machining attributes in new files, though older files will continue to maintain legacy behaviour unless they are changed. So in this component you can see we've got a number of features, we've already pre-created those and put those into a group. If I was to play the 3D simulation, we can see what the current state of the part looks like. So there's an internal groove here that we wish to machine using a slit saw. So I'm going to stop the simulation. For the time being I'm just going to hide everything, so I'm going to say just hide all. And then we're just going to show the solid. So just show the solid. So we just clear the view a little. So it's this internal groove here that we're trying to machine. So if I go over to the machining attributes, I'll just highlight here in the milling tab you'll see there's a checkbox that says use the new ID OD groove toolpath. So I'm going to use the new toolpath algorithm to calculate this groove. So I'm going to create the groove using the curve that I've already extracted. So I'm going to say new feature, groove, from curve, choose next. Next again, we're going to set an offset value in this case of minus 5 millimeters. And then in terms of dimensions we've got an ID or inside outside groove. And we're going 10 millimeters in both width and depth with the curve at the bottom. And I'm just going to flip the direction so we're cutting on the inside like so. Just going through the, the settings just to highlight we're using a slit saw in this case of a 50 millimeter diameter. So I'm going to say finish to that. So I've now created my feature and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to concentrate on the feature now. So let's go ahead and again just go hide all and just say show the groove. So in the case of the, the settings for this, if you go over to the strategy page you'll see there are a number of new settings. So we've got uh, an option here for plunge gouge checking, and we've got wind fan options for the, the finishing pass, and if I go to the roughing, uh, we've also got uh, support for the, uh, the ramp type. So in this case I'm using an S-shaped type ramping move uh, to move between each of the grooving roughing toolpaths. So in this case I'm going to drop the, the distance down just to make this a bit clearer. So I'm going to set 2mm and then just do a preview on the rough. So the tool comes into position. I'm just going to do Alt F3 and what you'll see is we get a nice smooth transition between those rough passes. If I was to play that all the way through we can see the shape where it's blended nicely between those toolpath segments. As I also indicated, we have uh, a, a checking for any sort of uh, plunging and, and retract. Uh, and what this does, it uses our plunge clearance value. So in an ID OD uh, groove that's cut into the side, uh, this plunge clearance value is the uh, distance it will try and uh, plunge and retract from uh, the actual shape. Now in the case of our, our groove, we've got quite a large tool cutting in here. Uh, and I've set this value to be 3 millimeters. Now because on the strategy page I've got plunge gouge check switched on, if I was to play this all the way through, even though the toolpath in uh, 2D uh, might look okay, if I go to the details uh, it gives me a warning saying it can't find a plunge or retract point at that clearance distance. Sure enough if I was to verify this in a 3D simulation, so I'm going to turn on uh, the other features, uh, just do a 3D simulation, so we'll play all the way through, and as we get to this grooving operation we can see we get a gouge uh, because the tool has sort of plunged in uh, and tried to uh, retract uh, and start uh, too far in with that uh, plunge clearance value. So I can drop that value down, I can go into the, the feature, uh, into the miscellaneous tab and I'm just going to make this a bit smaller so I know I haven't got much clearance so I'm just going to set that to be uh, a millimeter, set and apply and again note the uh, gouge checking is still on if I was to uh, go ahead and calculate that toolpath, if we look at the details, we no longer have the warning. Once again, I can verify that as a 3D simulation, just to verify that we no longer get a gouge 
as we plunge and retract into our part. So I've clearly created the, the groove quite nicely. So what I want to do now is move on to looking at some of the finishing parameters. So going back into that groove, let's just turn off the other features again. When we go into the strategy page, we can see we've got an option here for wind fan. So this allows me to uh, specify uh, a wind fan shape. So if I turn this on, you can see we've got a checkbox. I select wind fan finish and I can choose the radius of the wind fan itself and then the angle I wish to use. In this case I'm going to set this to be 90, uh, 90 degrees. Say OK and apply. Preview the toolpath and we get something like this and we can see the wind fan on the finish. We can make this a bit clearer if we go into the finish itself and just preview this single toolpath. So we see the tool goes to position, creates the wind fan and then comes off the part. If I wish to, I could display this as a part line type operation, so I can switch on my cutter compensation and part line. Apply that, and again preview the finishing operation, and we'll see the position of the side of the tool plotted on the screen, like so. You can clearly see the shape of the wind fan on the on the toolpath output. The other thing we have uh, is the ability to control start points, plunge points, uh, and retract points. So we now have this area of the, the field is enabled. So I can choose my start and plunge points. So in this case I can go ahead and select that centre location. And also if I just apply that and preview, you can see maybe my start point is here. And I can go ahead and move that just by moving its location, for example, indicating this position like so preview and we get the toolpath moving to this location. So the final thing I'm going to do in this case, just turn on the rest of my features and then play through the 3D simulation to complete the component gouge free.